Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we are looking at a beautiful tool which you can use to start creating materials, especially if you want to get started into making procedural materials and you're looking for something free, something open source, something that is quite light that you can lay your hands on, you will definitely find this one useful. And we're talking about no other tool than the Simbi node. And this is a free tool and an open source tool that you can get. Link to this is going to be in the description where you can go ahead and grab it. And the source code is also available on GitHub. So for those who like to grab the source code, you would also be able to find this one very useful. And at the same time, you can grab this one and start playing with it. This tool is currently in its developmental stage and it has 18 nodes which are like the basic nodes that you need to start working with some cool stuff of course there are planned releases and also updates coming to this but with that said let's get right into it so with the symbi node simply open right here you would notice that the ui looks relatively simple this big chunk which we have going on here is where your nodes would exist here is where you get to view the nodes view the properties of the node and a bigger view for where you can see all of your materials now to get started all you need to do is go over to file and hit on new and once you do that you would notice we have this grid and you also notice that we have the sphere now this is where you get to preview everything that you'll be working on and there's a tiny gear button right there that you can use to change this stuff so let's say you want to see it as a plane of course you can if you want to see it as a cube of course you can as well you can also choose to change the tiling from one two three or four x depending on what you're going for and to move around this so you can preview what you're looking at or what you're creating if you press down the middle mouse button and move up and down and move left and right that way you'll be able to you know move around this now you can also roll the middle mouse button backwards and forward and that way you can zoom in and zoom out now how do you create materials or how do you get started with creating things within the node Creating things within the node is very simple. All you need to do is just simply right click and you notice that we have the outputs which consist of albedo, metalness, roughness and normal. We have the texture, a couple of noise and also some primitive shapes that you can play with. And we have the color which consists of color basic nodes like the mix, the inverse, you know, coloring and so on and so forth. We have the filter that deals with normal and blur and finally we have the function so very basic and simple stuff that you would need and if you would like to start creating things creating these things are very very easy so we can go over to the output section and say we want to create some roughness and maybe we want to also add some normal now the beautiful thing is just like every other material node creator this has a normal map filter so you can use this normal map filter to actually filter your maps and do some stuff so if we switch this back to the sphere right now and i go ahead to connect this right now we've just simply set up the normals now for you to be able to see things happening if we click on the albedo you notice that we can change the color but we're definitely going to get to that as what we'd like to do is right click go over to the textures and take a look at some of the textures that they have so we've talked about the fact that they have this noise and you can actually drive a lot of things with noise so i can connect this noise over to this point and let's actually scale this bad boy so you guys can see what we're doing all right so I can connect that and you can see the beautiful stuff going on. So if I would like this to be able to drive the normal, all I need to do is click drag and connect that right here. And you notice that it's driving the normal. And once I click on this, I can increase and reduce the strength of the normal and we can get some good results from this one. Now, for those who are also thinking about, oh, does he have transform? Does he have things like tiling and all that stuff? Yes, it does. So if we also go over to the texture and I choose to bring out this polygon, we can do a lot of things with this polygon. It's a powerful tool, all right? So you can do a lot of things with it. So if I right click and go all the way to where we have the functions, you'll notice we have the transform and I can connect this transform to this and I can wire this all the way right here. And that way you can see that. And of course, within the polygon, you can play with the size. So let's say you want to make this a little bit like a square, like so. And you might want to increase or reduce the scale. You can do all of that. And something else which is very nice is it has the smooth feature. Now, in other apps, this smooth is considered as bevel. But of course, this is beautiful to see that we have this one right here. So we can do the smoothing kind of thing and get some good results from that. And of course, if you like to hotwire this over to your normal map, yeah, you can do that and you can get some cool stuff and you can also use this to drive the roughness, by the way. So I can connect this over and drive the roughness and you can see automatically we're getting cool stuff. So very basic and uh, lovely things for those who are thinking of getting into creating materials and you're wondering what nodal app you can work with that is open source and free. This one will definitely get you up to speed with what kind of things that you're looking for. Now, if you want to tile things across, you can also do that. So if we go over to the tiling section, we can actually tile this. All right. So we can go all the way here and connect this right over there and finally connect this one right over here. 
and that way you would notice that we're tiling this so let's actually you know knock this one out so that we can only preview what we have so this way you can see that we already started tiling this and for those who would like to you know within the tiling section let's say you want to increase or reduce the number of tiles you can do all of this so we can do some things like that i can actually crank this one all the way to number like uh, 10 so it's going to be divided by two so we can crank that up to that point and we can also choose to do some other uh, cool or crazy things so let's say for example i like to control the rotation from this point and maybe not from this point because already you would notice that we have the rotation from here so you can choose to control from either point so i can say i would like to control from this point and we can control this and automatically we have this set to let's set that to 127 and one thing which i would love to also see in other updates is if it's going to be possible to dial in numbers as sometimes you just want to get a very specific number but you have to just be a bit more careful for you to get what you're going for so maybe we'll keep this to 135 i think 135 looks good so we're just going to keep that at 135 and now let's talk about how you can introduce colors so we've looked at how you can bring in your basic stuff and by the way you can also even bring in more basic stuff all right so we can also go over to textures bring out the circle and then we can essentially do the same thing we can also go over to a section like this and then bring out a mix node so let's say we would like these two to be within the same space so we can do something like that i could go over to where we have our transform connect this transform right here and then we can also go over to where we have our color dragging the mix and this mix is what you would consider as a blending tool in other apps okay so this mix would blend the both of them together so at this point i can hotwire this over to this particular point and now you can see this in action now if you're also looking for something like a mask or you're looking for a factor which will determine what should be visible or not of course you can also use this tool to wire this all the way to a point like this and you can start getting some good results or you can also use this and wire this one right up until a point like that so this way you can start creating some very interesting things for yourself and at the same time we can drop this radius all the way down to a point like so and of course you can see that so this looks pretty nice we can also choose to translate this so within the y-axis we can say we want to translate this upwards or we want to translate this downwards depending on what we're going for actually we can have fun doing all of these things so with this said let's talk about the color so if we like to add colors to our stuff we can do this in various ways so one of the first ways that you would definitely want to try this one out is by actually right clicking and going over to where you have your textures and then you know Notice you have color now this color is something that I can just simply switch from this part and I can hotwire this color directly from here and connect it right there and automatically you would notice that that is not visible now the reason why we cannot see this color is because as far as I know it is just more like uh, something that you can use to reference black and white information across so if you would like to use colors what I would suggest is simply use either a color ramp or you can go over to the color section and you can use the coloring so this way you can have this uh, coloring tool which already you know once we have it clicked we can actually go in and change the colors however we want and we can also you know wire this from one point to the other so for this example if we go ahead and connect this one right over there and connect this right over here you would notice that we can now control the color however we want so this becomes what is responsible for coloring and not this particular one so you can now use this to color things across and by the way you can actually mix these colors as well let's actually copy and paste ctrl c ctrl v this so remember when we started we said we got to start with something like this of course you can also do some more stuff so at a point like this maybe this is where you want your coloring to start you can just simply wire this from one point wire it over to this point and already you start having that color and if i make a copy and paste again we can also do the same thing right here so we can connect this right here connect this over to this point and then we can change the color that we're looking for so let's actually go with something a bit more bright so we would go with something like so let's use white and i think while we're getting this feedback is because we already have a coloring node there so i'm just going to take that one out and connect this and of course you can start seeing what we have so this way 
you would notice that we have uh, something this beautiful so let's also use a different color i think we should just find something i guess the white is fine okay so you might also be wondering why is it that you know we are seeing this okay the reason why you're seeing this is because we are not running this through a mask now if you want to run this through a mask what we will do is instead of connecting this to the factor we can connect this to the mask so what the factor does is the factor blends between what you have here in this connection and here in the other connection so what we need to do is just simply take this out and if i do this you'll notice that we have that and if i do this you'd notice that we have this so the best thing to do is to actually wire this as a mask so if we go ahead and pick this up and wire this right here as a mask you would notice that we have this so if i punch this all the way you see we have just this two red and if i punch this backwards like so you notice that we have just those whites so what do we do let's say for example you want to get this rounded section and at the same time still maintain this too so what i would suggest that you do is very very simple all right so the best thing to do is just simply right click go all the way to where you have your inverse and we can just bring in that invert node and connect this from this point let's actually get this from here so we can connect that and invert that node and now we can drive this as a simple mask now once we drive that as a mask we can do the same thing by going all the way right here and bring in another mix and this mix on the other hand is going to give us the mask for the other side so we're also going to connect this one right here and then connect this other one over to this section and once we do this the next thing which we need to do is instead of getting just a simple one and connecting it there we can do a different inversion this time so connect this right here and you notice we have that inversion and we can connect this one right over there now you probably would not be able to see this because we don't have this wired up together so to wire these things up together we need another mix so this mix will connect one and two and finally we would have this so that way we'll be able to see this now you might be wondering why we're not seeing this thing going on and how we can do this is because we have a mix node that controls this we can now punch this all the way up and we will get the color that we need for that and we have this other mix node and we can punch this all the way backward now that way you will be able to see these two you know the way you want and by the way because you've gotten these two where you want them the next thing which we can do is we can go over to the mix section and we can simply use an add and add them both together so at this point now you now have full control of how you can work with these things now for those who would also want to you know put these things in a bucket do something like that yes you can you can also choose to do that so we can select all this let's say you want to frame all of this you can select all of these things this way so I'm just going to grab this one here, grab this one over here. So we can select all of them. We can right click, go over to frame and simply throw in a frame. So let's put all of this in a frame. At this point, this is still in its early developmental state. So I'm um, also just going to select this and let's also drag these ones inwards so we can drag them in and then position that right there so this way we have framed these ones in and we can also choose to use the noise to actually do some some very cool stuff so let's say you want to also impute those noise in you can choose to use this to create some stuff so we can also wire this noise all the way to this point and right now you can start noticing what we've just made this is a very lovely tool that you can actually go in and start playing with and actually we did make a very short node earlier so i'm just going to go ahead and load this one up so you guys can see and you can see just the very basic node that we use in setting this thing up everything looks relatively the same like i just shared with you guys so you can see like we have the polygon we have the transform and another transform to just control the scaling of course you can see that already so we have these two transforms to control that scaling and right here we have the noise and the thing with the noise is we just use the noise to drive what we have in the background and of course we also have these ones these ones these are just basic noise and you know the coloring stuff and so on that i just simply shared with you guys so this is like a very basic tool that you can use especially if you're just getting started with playing and creating materials by simply using a procedural method this is definitely something that you would find very rewarding to work with so link to this is going to be in the description for those who would like to play with it and for those who would like to get this file link to it is also going to be in the description so do well to check it out and that's definitely going to be about it i'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section 
And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with your tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.